After 18 years, the Rolling Stones are set to release a new album. That must have been a lot of moss to clean off. So let's get into the story behind the album, some of the incredible collaborations that are going to feature on it, and find out how they're set to honour the late great Charlie Watts. Hi, I'm Adam, welcome back to Music Mongoose. The album, set to release in October of 2023, is called Hackney Diamonds. It's a nod to the fact that the Rolling Stones have roots in London, but the phrase also serves as slang for the fragments of glass left over on the floor after a window has been smashed in a robbery. Sounds quite violent, doesn't it? And it sounds like they're making an effort to really tap into this grittier, darker side of the human experience. And the first single hints at this as well. The album's first single, Angry, essentially tells the tale of a lover's squabble, with a quintessentially Rolling Stones riff providing the backdrop. There's definitely a sense of anger in the track, as the title would suggest, but there's also this sense of groundedness, the idea that Mick Jagger is admitting that even rock stars get into squabbles with their other half. And maybe that's what Hackney Diamonds is supposed to be all about. Not about those perfectly presented shop front windows, but about the harsh reality that lies on the floor, the, the bits that people don't really tend to care about, the Hackney Diamonds. Jagger says the album is going to be quite eclectic, love songs, ballads and more of the angrier tracks, like the first single. The album will feature an impressive lineup of guest appearances from the likes of Lady Gaga and Stevie Wonder with more to be announced, and Paul McCartney and Ringo Starr, the two remaining members of the Beatles, are going to feature on the album. Does that put an end to the lifelong rivalry between the Stones and the Beatles? The album will also feature Charlie Watts on two songs, both of which were recorded in 2019 before he sadly passed away a year later. The songs to feature him are Mess It Up and Live By The Sword. Remarkably as well, Bill Wyman, original bassist for the Rolling Stones, was called in to help in 2019 on one of those tracks, which means one of the songs on the album features the original lineup of the Rolling Stones. How cool is that? So the album started coming together in December of 2022. Mick Jagger and Keith Richards said there was loads of ideas floating around before that, not to mention, of course, those tracks recorded with Charlie Watts. But in December, things started to finally come together in the shape of an album. 23 tracks were apparently produced, 12 are going to be on this album, which of course hints of a future album as well. The Rolling Stones are on a roll again, it seems. By February of this year, 2023, the album was mixed and pretty much ready to go. The recording process took them to studios in Jamaica, New York, LA and, of course, London. And the producer of the album is a chap called Andrew Watt. He also co-wrote some of the tunes. And that was a brilliant shout to hire Andrew because he has a great track record of hit albums. Now, he's worked with the likes of Miley Cyrus, Post Malone, Dua Lipa, who are all obviously current pop artists. But he also produced Elton John's reimagining of Hold Me Closer with Britney Spears and produced Ozzy Osbourne's album, Patient No. 9. So it seems he really has a knack for bringing older names in the music world to the foreground again. If you are an older artist and you had your heyday a long time ago, then Andy might be the man to bring you back into the public consciousness. Now, of course, this is the first album recorded by The Stones since Charlie Watts sadly passed away. In the press launch event for the album, the remaining members revealed how different it was to record without Charlie. Now, replacing Charlie Watts on the album is a guy called Steve Jordan. Now, Steve Jordan is Charlie Watts' actual recommendation. He basically said to the band, if anything happens to me, this is the man I want you to get to drum. Jordan already had a history with the Rolling Stones. He appeared on the 1986 Dirty Work, playing percussion, and he was also a member of Keith Richards' side project, Expensive Winos. And he's worked with legends of the music industry, the who's who. Don Henley, John Mellencamp, Cat Stevens, Bob Dylan, B.B. King, Stevie Nicks, Sheryl Crow, Neil Young, John Spencer Blues Explosion, and Kelly Clarkson, just to name a few. So yeah, with a CV like that and a personal reference from Charlie Watts himself, I'd say that's a pretty safe hire. So that is just about everything we know at the moment about the upcoming album. Let me know in the comments below what you're most excited about. And to hear the story of when the Rolling Stones produced a song so bad that not even the radio could play it, click here and I'll catch you next time on Music Mongoose. Okay, bye bye now!